Hello, welcome to Trombone World. Luke Malevich here, and today we're going to talk about how to use the trigger on our trigger trombone. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. And as always, please share the videos with anybody that you think is going to find them helpful. Now today we're going to be talking about the trigger on your trigger trombone and how to use it. I'm going to post links to two charts in the description below. One of the charts is going to be specific to the trigger. That's going to have only the notes that you can play with the trigger. And the second chart is going to be specific just to a standard tenor trombone without a trigger and it's going to have only the standard trombone notes. So again, there'll be two charts, one specific to only the trigger and one specific to a trombone that doesn't have a trigger. The trigger, as I mentioned in the previous video, is called an F trigger because it puts the instrument in the key of F, meaning that you can go from your low B flat, press the trigger, and you'll end up playing a note F, which will sound like this. Let's talk about how to tune the trigger. Now let's assume that you've tuned the instrument to a key of B flat, whether it's a tuner or a drone that you were listening to, but the instrument itself is in tune. Now the way that we tune the trigger is we tune it to the note F in the staff. I'm going to play my F, and then I'm going to press the trigger, and I'm going to play the same exact note. And when the two notes match, that's when I know that the trigger itself is going to be in tune. I'll do that one more time. Now, for example, I'm going to mess around with the tuning so you can hear what it sounds like when it's out of tune. So I'm going to push the tuning slide all the way in for the trigger here. You can hear the difference when the, when the note's going to sound sharp. Let me play it again. Now what I'm going to do is pull out the tuning slide for a trigger so you can hear what it sounds like when the note is really flat. So you can see I pulled out the trigger mechanism quite a lot. You'll be able to hear how flat the note sounds. So now let me put it back and make sure that it's in tune. Let's double check. Let's start by talking about two of the most common notes that you're going to play first when you get your trigger trombone. And those are going to be your C and your B. Now those notes, you can also play with your regular trombone, you could play them in sixth and seventh position. With a trigger, you're going to play them in first and second. C in first. And B in second. Now keep in mind that every instrument is going to be a little bit different. So that on some instruments, you might actually have to go out just a little bit for the C to be in tune and out just a little bit from second position for the B natural to be in tune. So the general rule is to always use your ear. Now the next two notes you're most likely to use are going to be your F and your E below the staff. So normally, just like with C and B, those are in sixth and seventh position. So your F in sixth and your E in seventh. And again, you can play those two notes in first and second. So F. And here is your E. Now the four notes that we talked about, your C and your B, your F and your E, you can play in two different places. You can play them with a trigger and without. Now just because you can play your C natural with the trigger in first position, doesn't mean you're always going to do that. That really depends on the line that you're playing. It depends on what's written in the music. Sometimes it actually makes more sense to go and play the C in sixth position rather than playing it in first. For example, if I'm playing a line that goes from D to D flat and ends on C, like this. 
Now it makes a lot more sense to keep going rather than coming back to first, which would be really awkward because you have to make a quick turn and bring your hand all the way back to first position. That's very tricky to do, and there's really no reason to do that. You would just go out to the sixth position. Same thing if I'm going between D flat and C over and over. I would never play the C with the trigger in first. I would just keep going between fifth and sixth position. And the same thing applies to our F and our E with the trigger. If I'm going between G flat and F, I would just keep going five and six. Now let's move on. The next four notes that you can play with the trigger are only available with the trigger so that there are no other options to use. So if you see those notes, you have to play them with the trigger. The first is gonna be our E flat. Now that note is going to be in between third and fourth position. So if our third position is here, and our fourth position is here, the E flat is going to be just about in the middle. And again, there are always slight variations. It could be here, it could be here, it just really depends. So you have to listen to make sure that the note is in tune. Let's play our E flat with a trigger. Now you can use a drone or a held note to make sure that that E flat is in tune. The other thing you can do is play the, the E flat in third position, the octave above, and tune it to that. So now I'm gonna go between my E flat and the staff in third position to the trigger E flat in three and a half. Now more than likely, you haven't played any notes that are in between positions, so you're going to really have to make sure that you get used to doing it. The most common thing for students to do is to either stay in third or go too far. So if I stay in third position to play that E flat, it sounds really sharp. Moving on, we have our D. D is going to be in fifth. Sometimes it could be five and a half. It depends on the instrument. But a good starting point is to play it in fifth and see if you can get it in tune. So I'm going to jump up the octave like I did with the E flat. So I'm going to play my D in the staff in fourth and then the D with a trigger in fifth. Moving on to our D flat. Now D flat's going to be in sixth position. Let me jump up to the D flat in the staff, play that in fifth, and then play the trigger D flat in sixth. Now the final note that we're gonna play with the trigger is going to be our C. And C is going to be almost as far as you can go, basically in seven, seventh and a half, seven and a half position. And that's really the last note, which means that there is no B natural, right? Because the next note that we can play, the next regular note we can play in first position is going to be our pedal B flat, which means there's going to be one note that we're not going to be able to play with that trigger. So let's go play our, play our C out in seven and a half. So let me go now between my C and the staff in sixth, and then the C with a trigger in seven and a half, just to make sure that I'm in tune. Now there are a couple of other notes that you can play with the trigger that are down in the pedal register, and you have your pedal F in sixth, and pedal E in seventh, which you can play in sixth and seventh position, just like the octave above, but you can also play with the trigger in first and second. Now what I would suggest to get used to playing the notes in the trigger register is to practice them using scales. For example, let's play our F major scale descending from the middle of the staff and we're gonna end up playing the C with the trigger and then our final F with the trigger as well. You can do the same thing with your E major scale, playing the B natural in second with the trigger, and then our E also in the second with the trigger. Then our E flat. So I would encourage you to play scales, to play melodies, to play anything that you know even down the octave 
and using the trigger just to get used to those notes. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.